you can see it. Um, uh -huh. It says starting recording with the red button up there. Now it says record. Okay, so now we're recording. So it's Monday here and Sunday night at your place. And that we started talking about something and it reminded me of something that we can talk about. And that is, is that when we're really young kids, every one of us in almost every culture, I don't know of any cultures where this is not true. And that is, is that every child learns a skill from their parents. The child sees the parents operate this skill, and so the child learns the skill. And what is the name of that skill? The skill of being able to complain. Complaining, that's the skill that the child learns. Mm. And the child learns this skill in order to get what he wants or get what he needs. And so we grow up developing, and some of us get really, really good at that skill of complaining. In fact, the best people at it are the politicians. They really know how to complain. Okay. Yeah. Brought it to an art form. And what we're um, doing with Anapanasati is learning to see those things, to recognize that the complaining mind or the mind that wants to tell someone else a story I've got to get this off my chest, et cetera, like that. That whole quality of, um, you see it in meditation retreats when a student has some kind of experience. Doesn't matter what any kind of experience it is, but one of the ways he wants to do is he wants to go tell one of the other students about it. This is one of the reasons why they have volunteers and teachers and whatnot having private interviews is because they know that they're, that's the only way to get these meditators to shut their mouth because they want to go complain. Mm. Okay. And so this is a part of the quality of a 10 day retreat of practicing noble silence is to begin to see all of these stories we want to tell other people, all of these things that happen. And, and we want justification. We want to complain. We want to set things right. We want to figure out what's going on. All of this want, 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 want. They can be wrapped up into the ball of complaining. And so if we recognize that we all have that habit, then we can begin to look for these thoughts of <clears throat> and recognize that these thoughts of complaining have to do with the fact that we don't like something. Or even if it's, a, a, let us say, the meditator had a really great grand experience, he still wants to go tell somebody else that. But here's the danger, that later, months later, when he remembers that or tells the story again, he will not tell the story of actually what happened because what actually happened was very subtle. What he will remember is the story he told. Mm. And that story that we're telling actually makes it real for us because otherwise it really wasn't all that real anyway. So the question is, do we have to make something real or can it we just allow it to be metal and just pass away? Mm -hmm. um, the other day I gave an analogy and I'll give it to you here again. And that is, is that um, the teacher actually asked the, the students about heavy. How heavy is the cup? Is this cup heavy? And the students would calculate and they said, well, the cup may be weighing about two or three ounces and the coffee in it and the water in it is about eight. So maybe about 11 ounces. And the teacher says, I didn't ask you how much did it weigh. I asked you how heavy it was. Then he says, when you pick up the cup and hold it just for a moment, like taking the sip and drinking, it doesn't weigh much. But if you keep it and hold it up, and hold it in the arm, the arm gets a little tired, and then the cup gets heavy. And if I leave it holding it for a long period of time, that cup's going to get very, very heavy. And I would like to put it down because it weighs something now. And if I keep it up for an hour, I may have my arm hurt. If I keep it up all day long, 
then I may not even be able to use my arm tomorrow. <laughs> That's how heavy the cup could be. And so the question is, are sometimes our thoughts like that? Are our complaints like that? Are our stories like that? That if we keep telling a story over and over again, that's like giving it more weight, like hanging on to it, holding it up, and it becomes heavy. That's where importance comes from. Things are thought to be important, but important is just another word for heavy. Mm. And and so things are important because we have them on our mind. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask some kinds of questions. It's a little joke, and very few people get it. So listen carefully for this joke. What you got on your mind? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what, like a costume? Yeah, well, that's right. What you, what have you got on your mind is literally what have you got on your mind, because that's what you've got on. Whatever you've got on your mind, that's what the mind is, mm -hmm. and that's what you've got on. Mm -hmm. That's the heaviness, is because we've got things on our mind. We carry things around, important mm -hmm. things. Why are they important? Because we keep carrying them. If we set it down, it wouldn't be important anymore. So this is that whole idea of complaining when we complain or when we want to tell somebody a story. Like I've had a lot of turbulence today, and so we go tell the story. I've had a lot of turbulence. That's just carrying the turbulence around again and again and again. Uh -huh. And if you go tell 10 people about your turbulence, then that means that you've got 11 times the amount of weight that you've added to it. And if we think about it over and over and over again, we're just piling on and piling on and piling on until pretty soon we get a PhD. Because it gets piled higher and deeper. And then it becomes really important because now it's really heavy to carry because we keep piling it on. And so the whole thing then is to recognize that any thoughts that are repetitive or dukkha, because it's just the piling on. It's just keeping and holding and holding and holding, just like co the coffee cup. When can I finally, even though it's very heavy, when can I actually set it down? What's my rule? How long am I going to hold that cup up to prove to you that I can hold the cup while it's getting heavy? <laughs> just to make a point. And the point is, is that when we are thinking of things to say to someone or thinking of complaints to make. Or having a complaining mentality or having a story to tell, having turbulence, just getting rid of it immediately is the easy way out. Just set it down as soon as we remember, oh, that's turbulence. I don't have to carry that around. I can set that down. That's going to get heavy if I keep remembering to tell Damaratu about my turbulence. Then it's going to get big. By the time I tell him, it's going to be really big because I could <laughs> carry it around and re and adding to and, and piling on and all of that. And so you really have something to complain about. As if I could do something about it. I mean, I'm not a complaint department. <laughs> I'm not a very good complaint department. <laughs> Is there ever I, I want you to have many happy returns. <laughs> Not returning to the complaint department. Go ahead, ask your question. Is there ever a case in which the the dukkha is there as a Instead of a thought or an emotion, but more of like a, a vague or undefinable energy or sensation. Well, it can be in almost any form. The question is, is can you throw that out and gladden the mind? Can you remember to do that? 
See, the reason why I ask that, that is, yeah, but you're asking it because that's the Mahasi method. He is let's investigate that dukkha. No, 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 no. I wasn't trying to investigate anything today. Um, <laughs> trust me, I've, <laughs> I've learned about all that. Um, when I woke up this morning, I just started taking deep. Usually what I do in the morning is I just wake up and I start taking some really relaxed, enjoyable breaths okay. and do that for a little while and then slow down my breathing and then get the mind gets really still really calm and then that'll kind of be like the reset button right of however i wake up and then mm -hmm. i will like sustain that i'll see if i can stay with those wholesome sensations and the breath and sustain that okay and so you're if, practicing congrat uh you're practicing congrat correctly congratulations for that of course and, and if there's ever that, any kind of can. well not necessarily a but but more of like a speculation so when the the dukkha will come in i'll throw it out glad in the mind congratulate myself success ah great we're okay everything's fine here and today this dukkha that was coming over and over again after each time I threw it out, it was coming more rapidly than it usually does. One. Well, that's and because you're watching and waiting for it. Generally, it sneaks in and stays, and you don't even see it. Now you're at the door, and you see it keep coming back and keep coming back. Congratulate yourself for that, too. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. It's just that for the past weeks or even month, even, it's been, I mean, I've had days where it's been like that, but that hasn't really been that common of Without an occurrence. Without much further, was today good enough? Yes, today was good enough. Okay, so we don't have to go into it any deeper, do we? I guess the only reason why I was mentioning it is because I, I'm concerned that either maybe I'm not practicing correctly anymore, or there's something that I might have missed. Or, when you are concerned, you're not practicing correctly. Well, because, you know, I found this because landing spot, sure. this awareness, yeah, right, you, where I could okay. just no, let it, it all. Was, it was a landing spot. It's not the landing spot. It's just a new one. And the idea is, is that this is such a nice landing spot. I've got to keep landing here over and over again. Hmm. No, go land somewhere else. Enjoy that too. You don't have to land someplace. And so this whole idea of concerned about getting it right, we've gone through this before. This is all those rules and it gives you the state of doubt. And when you're in a state of doubt and concern, you're not practicing correctly. So if you're concerned about practicing correctly, that's not practicing correctly. So you got that one ticked off. <laughs> you have to that question. <laughs> and so how do you then practice correctly is throw out the concern. So that it won't be heavy. But if you get concerned and concerned and concerned, and there you are holding that coffee cup up in the air until the arm gets tired over and over and over again and you've been concerned alex about all kinds of things for many years it's an old habit that you have so that means that you're very strong with that habit and you could keep that habit going for a long time this is why it's good for you to begin to see your concern wanting to get it right wanting to be perfect i mean you used all the jargon to get you to look at that. So now you've used the word concern. And so I'm going to harp on concern is dukkha. Wanting to get it right is dukkha. Rather than saying, whatever I'm doing, I've got it right. I got this.
I just I, I feel a bit discouraged to be honest with I you because no, you do, and that's Duca. Can you see that discouraged? I can you see say, it. Hey, I don't I, have to be discouraged. I don't have to complain about being discouraged. I can just throw discourage out. Yeah, it's it's just that two days ago I could confidently tell you that I was disidentified from the I am. That's okay, all of these but things. my crafts and cling to that. I know. That I know. That's all Duca. That's all Duca. I know. Well, it is when you want it and you don't have it. This is one of the dangers of meditation is, is that people get things and then they want it again. And then now because they want it, they can't have it because what they got was being in the state of not wanting anything. I know it's hard. It's case 22. But you can turn your mind around if we if we keep looking at it from this position of so now you're complaining because you can't do what you did two days ago. Mm -hmm. And you're concerned because you can't do what you did two days ago. Well, it's, it's almost as if I had no choice in the matter because well, the yes, whole you do. The choice is, are you going to stay disappointed and concerned? Are you going to say, hey, I'm okay without it? I don't need whatever happened two days ago. I'm okay right now. I don't mean now that I don't have a choice. I mean while it was happening because I was being on guard for it. I was even I was aware that that could have happened. I was like, nope, I'm not going to cling to it. I'm not going to want it. Nope. I'm uh, nope, not going to be concerned about that. And here we are. Well, so. that's what got it to you, though. You got that because you were going to be concerned whether you got it or not. And so you got it. And now you're concerned because you can't get it again. And you're disappointed. So if you got yourself into that state by saying, hey, I got no problems and I don't need it and everything is going to be OK, then you can start having those kind of thoughts again, rather than having concerned thoughts about why you can't have it. It's a very subtle change, but you have to start gladdening thoughts that are in the mind right now. Not what happened two days ago. So you could remind yourself of what you did two days ago, but now you got to do it right now. And that is to say you don't need any special states that everything is cool. You're going to be OK without it. And everything is all right. Everything is fine. Pretty soon you relax and start to feel good. Because you're talking yourself into it again. Well, well, that's the thing, Domerado. I've been doing that all day, talking myself into feeling good, and then Duca would come back, and then talk myself yes, into feeling good, and then Duca would come back. That's the process. So much, and then, and then it comes to the point that now it's too much Duca. It came back one too many times. Yes, Duca is now more powerful than my Sati. Mm. And it wasn't right. before, so it's like, wh where did this come from? I thought I had a handle where on this came, stuff. Right. Guess what? You do if you would do it one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. Number of mine. How many times it keeps coming back? Just one more time. I can throw that out. I'll get frustrated the next time it comes back. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll get concerned after it uh, comes up five more times. I'll get disappointed, but it's got to come up another 20 times before I'm going to get disappointed. Because <laughs> oh, you know it's going to keep coming back. That's the whole point is it does keep coming back. The question is, is when it comes back, are you going to be able to throw it out? And you're wanting it to never come back. We're not interested in controlling what happens when the when the mind is, let us say, subject to hindrances. We're much more interested in getting the mind free from those hindrances. One at a time, right now. <laughs> right now, not for all time, just for right now. That's the way that we're practicing. Is there any is there any part of our practicing together that involves getting free of the mind altogether? Yeah, I've got a 22. If you don't want them brains, you can blow them out. 
I don't mean it that way, but of like. Well, that was an answer. I mean, you were looking for a yes answer. I give you at least one yes answer. <laughs> the, like, you know, like the the attachment to the self. And Can the you in be the... willing to go for the rest of your life throwing hindrances out until you die? No. Oh. Then you'll never come to that state. You'll always be in a state of dissatisfaction. But when you're ready to say, I'm willing to go for the rest of my life throwing these hindrances out and being satisfied that I could catch them and throw them out. Then you've got something. What? Because you're willing to throw out the hindrances. You're saying that when... Uh, no, I'm willing. To, you're willing to up to a point, and then after that, <laughs> you're going to give in to them. Well... You're going to get concerned. 20... It, it, up, any that, breaths from now? No. <laughs> <laughs> if that was the way it was going to be for the rest of my life, yes, I would do it because that's that's better than the alternative, which is just being in ignorance and delusion. Ah, now you're cooking. Yes, because it is better, at least when you do remember to throw the hindrance out, to be free from it then. Than to just forget the whole thing and just go back into solid dukkha, dukkha, dukkha the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is worthwhile every time that they come up, you can throw them out if you can if you can remember to throw them out. But if you forget to throw them out, then they look permanent. When they're just temporary, every every hindrance that ever arose only stayed a short time, and we have to keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Each mind moment is a new mind moment. And you have a choice over what you're going to do with this mind moment. You can either complain about the last mind moment. <laughs> or you can change it into a ha this mind moment being a happy mind moment. So just as how it works is, is that the students are in dukkha and they're unaware of it. Then they come into the awareness of the dukkha. And the next thought they have is another thought of dukkha of not liking the previous thought. And then they don't like that one. And then they start dwelling on, and then I've forgotten their sati altogether, which is what is very common for you, as well as all the other students. It's very common. The question is, is your sati strong enough for you to actually wake up so that you can actually have the next thought to be a wholesome thought? Oh, out you go. I don't need you. I'm okay without being concerned. I'm okay. And I don't need to be concerned about the hindrances coming back. I know they're coming back. They will continue to come back, and I'll be there for them. I can handle that. Yeah, I've done that. Okay. So start doing it again. That's the practice. Keep doing that. Getting the attitude that you're bigger and better and grander and bolder and the champion of those dukkhas. That you can handle those hindrances. That they're not going to weigh you down and kill you. And you may have to deal with them the rest of your life, but you've got the skill to do that. And that's the attitude. That you got it. And pretty soon that becomes your predominant attitude. But right now your predominant attitude is, oh, no, I've got to put up with this stuff for the rest of my life. That's your predominant attitude. But if you keep changing that attitude over and over and over again, pretty soon your predominant attitude will be, I've got this wired. You can handle anything. Even the recurring dukkha, it keeps coming back, it keeps coming back, it keeps coming back. Because there's nothing to it, it's just thought. And you are not that thought. But if you keep having those thoughts over and over and over and over again and don't put them down, they're going to get heavy, just like that coffee cup. And so you're almost under an obligation to wake up and to see that hindrance and to throw it out. Just like you're under an obligation to take the next breath. So if you're under obligation to take the next breath, why don't we do it right? Oh, oh. <sighs> oh that's, that's the whole nice. Right. Yes, that you're under an obligation now to throw that hindrance out. And if you don't fulfill your duty to the Dhamma, that's that 
Duca is going to get heavy. Don't need to worry about that. Throw it out. No problem. Uh-huh. No Who worries. Mm-hmm. Forgetting about that. There's no, yeah, there's no, there's no turmoil. No big deal. There's no turbulence. I there's can relax. There's nothing turbulating. Exactly. There's nothing turbulating other than what's going on between the ears, and we can relax that too. It's it's funny, you know, because sometimes I literally want to tell you, like, but Dom Rado, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I don't know how to do That's it anymore. A, recognize that as a hindrance and say, yes, you do. Yes, I do. I've done it before yes, many times. Many Congratulations. Times. I, yeah, I, might, I might not necessarily feel amazing or great right now, but that's okay. I still know how to throw good out. Enough. That's good enough. I feel good enough. That's enough. That's what we're looking for is to feel good enough to come out of our dissatisfaction and we feel satisfied. It's good enough. It may not be spectacular. It may not be golden. It may not last, but it's right now, enough. Enough. it's good enough. And if we practice good enough, good enough gets better and better. But we got to start with it being good enough. Because not good enough is going to get better and better. It's going to get more not good enough. You see the distinction? You got to start with good enough, and that grows. You got to let that seed good enough grow nurturing what i wanted to what i wanted to say to you earlier is that about three or four or five times today i just sat down or laid down and did the breathing because i kept feeling so bad kept thinking about so bad your coffee cup got really heavy I don't even know. I don't. I don't even think there. There weren't really many thoughts, though, Domerado. And whatever I saw them, whatever I threw they them out. were, were heavy. Yeah. And you didn't see them. Whatever the thoughts were, they were heavy. Number one, and they were heavy because they were repetitive. And number two, you didn't see them because you just said, "I don't know." So now is the opportunity to start paying more attention when you feel bad is to say, why do I feel bad? What have I been thinking that's gotten me into feeling bad? And then you can change that. Thoughts of confusion, thoughts of this isn't good enough, thoughts of I had it once and now I've lost it. Yeah, I thought I was oh, I thought I was done with all that. Then they're done that. You're not ever done with anything. The question is, do you have the skills to deal with it now? Stop trying to get a reward for something long term when everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. And you do it now. <laughs> See that too. See that frustration of wanting it to be over and nothing is ever over. Everything runs in circles. And here you are kicking that cycle into motion again with your frustration. So it's going to come around again. When you start being satisfied and everything is good enough, that's when you take the pressure off. You take the pushing out. You take the driving out of it. And then the wheel will eventually slow down. But while it's still slowing down and not come to a rest completely, every time it spins, you see it, and then you jump on that cycle and you get it going again. You have to recognize that that's all in a cycle and you can handle it and you don't have to jump in it. You don't have to kick it. You don't have to get frustrated. You don't have to be concerned. You don't have to get distressed. Just because that cycle is going around and sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Be comfortable riding the wheel because it will slow down if you're comfortable riding it. And when you keep trying to get off the wheel, it keeps it going. The wheel of samsara. That's right. That's the Pali word for it. It's samsara. Oh, no, no. And sometimes you feel like a net, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel good, sometimes you don't. Don Rado, I was saying that to myself today. I was like, hey, that's okay. That's all yeah. right. That's just how it feels. But it was just, 
it was I just didn't feel good today for most of the day. Yeah, I it's wasn't as okay much of a ditch. Feel good. It's OK. You don't feel good. OK, whatever that means. OK. But doesn't that mean I'm it's having satisfied. unwholesome thoughts? No. 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 Questioning am I having unwholesome thoughts rather than investigating am I having unwholesome thoughts? That's the hindrance is the questioning. We're not asking you to question. Not doing that kind of research. We're actually looking at the observation of what happened. What thought are you having now? And if the thought is, why do I feel bad? Then that's a hindrance. Why am I tired right now? That's a hindrance. A hopeful of thought would be, never mind, I can be tired. It's okay. Or never mind, I can feel bad. Too? Yeah, it's all right to feel bad. Let me take a deep breath and feel really bad for a moment. Let me see if I can go. It. I mean, can you can take any control of it? Can you move it to the west? Can you move it east? Can you move it up? Can you move it down? Can you move it sideways? Can you make it throb like your heart? Can you make I, it pulsate with your with your breathing? Can you thought, set it to rhythm? I thought can you, you make said it that rhyme? these unwholesome feelings start at an unwholesome thought, though. An unwhole yeah. thought. They do, and to now we're playing a game. Now we're making them big and making them small and making them grow and having fun with it and making that feeling into something that is just a toy. Yeah, you feel bad, so what? It's just a toy, another toy to play with. And it becomes easy. The rec the point really is for you to recognize that you don't like things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't like it. That's why you're wanting to complain. That's why there's turbulence is because you don't like it. Remember, we've already talked about being satisfied when you don't get what you want. Mm -hmm. I said that to myself today, too. I was yeah, practicing. Yeah, yeah, great. OK, so keep going with that. Those are the kind of thoughts to have. Rather than, oh, no, I've had that thought too many times and it's not working. I still have hindrances. Poor me. That's an unwholesome thought. Thoughts that this is turbulence. That's an unwholesome thought. The thought of, hey, look at all of that. I can handle that, too. That's a wholesome thought. And so this is what we're practicing now is you're beginning to recognize what is a wholesome thought and what's not a wholesome thought. Thoughts of concern, thoughts of frustration, thoughts of doubt, thoughts of worry, thoughts about getting something back again that you had yesterday. Those are all in those thoughts. Thoughts of never mind, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm tired, but I'm okay. Well, I feel so tired, I don't even have to get out of bed. I can just lay here and enjoy being tired. that you don't have to live up to someone else's standard anymore. You can set your own standards. Be careful and wise to set those standards very, very low. <laughs> and the only bar that you have to cross is Duca Duca Naroda. That's the only bar. You can set your standards so low that you can be completely satisfied. If you're good enough, you're okay. But you're setting yourself on a whole lot of standards like, oh, well, what I did yesterday, now that's a new standard. I got to well, jump that bar. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you understand, but I feel like the reason why that happened is because in that new experience of awareness that I was having, I was less identified to this to these complaints, to these thoughts, these unwholesome oh, yes, thoughts. Yes, but right now you are identified with them no. and see that too. Yeah, I so understand. It's not, what understand. happened yesterday is irrelevant. Doesn't matter, you're right. It doesn't it, matter, right. But here's the thing if it is, is that many people have insights and will say, oh, that means that I can see no self, but I've got a whoop de doo I get a golden trophy or I get a gold star from the teacher because I can see no self. No, you can well, see no, no self anytime. There's no issue. 
there's I mean, what the question is, is not could you see it yesterday? The question is, can you see it now? Now, now is always the question. So don't think that insights are going to be permanent. Nothing is permanent. Everything is in turmoil. And if you join that turmoil, then the turmoil is between the ears. Anicca vata sankara upata vayu domino, so the Buddha says. Everything is changing. Anicca vata sankara. Everything is in turmoil. Everything is in motion. Everything is moving. The question is, is can you be the only thing in all that turmoil that's not moving? Can you find stability in the mess? For a moment, practice having just a bit of stability is okay. So I'm tired. So I'm not up to the state that I was yesterday. So what? Whatever the turbulence brings, I can handle it. I'm satisfied. Because really the turbulence is there because you like part of it and not like the other part. Mm. And you want to control the turbulence. You can't control it. The only thing you can control is how do you feel about it? And you're okay with it. Everything. Yeah. yeah. I think. Sounds like progress to me. Okay. Right. Beginning to understand what is wholesome and what is not wholesome is great progress. Yeah, because it's like we're 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 getting much more fine with the focus of it. We're we're getting much more down to the wire, whereas before it was like, you know, the. Well, I wouldn't say down to the wire. What's a wire? Well, not down to the wire, but like maybe down to a hair. A hair. Well, how about a tenth of a hair or a millimeter? I mean, what difference does it make? We're making progress. But the progress is I don't know that I can throw <laughs> those hindrances out. Yeah, I guess that we're we're right. seeing we're seeing an even deeper layer of um, well, that's deception. Going to happen. Listen, if De deception you deception and if, trickiness in the dukkha. Okay, let us say it like this: Imagine that you were digging your own grave, and every shovel full of dirt that you dig is going down to a deeper layer of just more dirt. How deep do you have to dig to find a new dirt? Pretty long way. Most of it's just going to be just more of the same thing over and over again. So don't think of it in the sense of getting down to the wire as if the, the quality of the dirt is changing or the fact that what's under the wire is just more dirt. <laughs> and we're not trying to get to the end of the dirt. We're trying to throw this dirt that we got in our shovel out. There'll be no end to the dirt. Right. The question is, are you going to be an expert at throwing dirt out of your shovel? Yeah, so it's like. Really, like. No matter what is going on, no matter what emotions, what thoughts, what's happening. It's having this the attitude that I can handle it no matter what. The skills of like, I could take a smile, I can congratulate myself for seeing that thing and then not spend another second with it. Just let it go. Uh -huh. Like, that's OK. I could be satisfied. I and now I have the joy right here. I can really be satisfied. Oh, yeah, I can do this. And allow that satisfaction. <laughs> Joyous satisfaction. Comfortable satisfaction. Adding that joy to it is the pity, the success on top of the satisfaction. Allow yourself to feel the joy. It's really okay. Really okay. Wow, this is okay. That I caught that hindrances again. 
Ah, oh, that concern. Yes, now I see concern. It's just another form of doubt. Am I getting it right? Oh, I had it yesterday and now I don't have it. Oh, I'm full of grief and doubt. How do I get it back again? We'll just throw those thoughts out. Be satisfied. It's a very easy practice, but it seems how, so complicated. How do we actually just be satisfied? By talking yourself into it. Because you've been talking yourself in being dissatisfied your whole life. Now it's time to talk yourself into being satisfied. Having thoughts that are satisfying thoughts will help you to feel satisfied. What do you think? Having unsatisfying thoughts are going to make you feel satisfied? <laughs> no. That's not likely to happen, is it? Okay, so do we keep having to change those thoughts of concern and want, desire, frustrations, um, uh, turbulence? Need to change those thoughts into wholesome thoughts. This is okay, I can handle this. Everything is fine, I can make this satisfied. I'm satisfied enough. Let me take a deep breath and practice being satisfied. Ah, oh, this too is okay. Yeah, that's all right. This is the quest. This is the way. You will continue on a journey. Every time that you're on a journey, you will find some place to put your foot. Be careful where you step. As they say, uh, in fact, <laughs> there. There was an old TV series called The Monk, or his name was Monk. And he was a private investigator, but they threw him off the police force because he was nuts. He was actually um, obsessive compulsive disorder. But his compu obsessive compulsive disorder meant that he wanted to be clean, which made him an excellent investigator. So he was a really excellent police investigator that they didn't want around because he was nuts. But every time that they had a case that they couldn't solve, they'd bring him in. Which they managed to do that once a week for every episode of the... <laughs> and so every time he would come in on a cold case or something that nobody else could solve, and he'd figure it out. They had a theme song. And that's the story that I'm telling you now, is the theme song is uh, uh, the the... And either the name of it or the main line of the song is, it's a jungle out there. Because he was obsessive disorder, uh, compulsive, which meant that he saw everything as dirty. Everything was a jungle. Everything was terrible, right? And so the thong, the song of this um, series was, it's a jungle out there. Well, I saw one of these episodes, and then later I saw an episode because there's a monk walking into people's houses and whatnot, and they've got the television on. and. So I heard that song several times, and immediately I got the idea that it, the song is upside down, that it's not a jungle out there, it's a jungle in here. That the jungle is inside Monk's mind, it's not out there, the world is not dirty, it's his mind that's dirty. Right? But not only that, but that's actually a way of looking at practice for for Anapanasati practices to recognize that, yes, it's just a jungle. We have to watch every step. Or you're going to step on some snake. You're going to step on a cow pie. You're going to step on a turd. You're going to step on something dangerous. You're going to have, you're going to step on a thought of confusion. You're going to uh, concern. These are the kind of your, your forest is full of concern. Don't step on it. And when you get very good at catching concern, then you can dance right around it. Yeah. Without tripping on it and falling over. So concern's a new one for you. Don't get concerned. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't have turbulence, you know, dance around it. <laughs> the jungle is in here. Be careful where you step. Yeah, Every thought concern has been very subtle, very subtle. Yeah, there's been like other thoughts on top of it, and I couldn't see concern before. So that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the ah, consent. there it is again. Congratulations. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Great. Yeah, so look closely. Pay attention. <laughs> looky, looky, wakey, wakey. See what we're doing in the mind. Keep waking up and say, oh, yeah, I see that. I see concern now. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's okay. Never Not mind. a problem. It's okay. You probably heard this before, mind over matter. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means if you don't mind, it don't matter. <laughs> if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So what matters is what you mind, which means you care about, you want something. That's the turbulence. That's the confusion. That's the concern. Is that things matter? Guess what? <laughs> Nothing matters. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yesterday's experience doesn't matter. That was yesterday. I could be okay without it. Hmm. What, turbulence? Yeah, I know what that is. And I can throw that right out. I can actually just sit down beside it and have a rest with that turbulence. Don't have to get rid of the turbulence. Just be satisfied that I could see it. And the satisfaction will melt that turbulence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the turbulence is just being dissatisfied. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you didn't get what you wanted. And so now the turbulence is how do I get it? 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 But that's the turbulence. And when you don't want anything because you're satisfied, the turbulence will. Kind of slow down and come to a rest after a few seconds. Until you want something and then it starts back up again. Mm -hmm. And so every time that you get concerned, every time you see the turbulence, every time you get frustrated, every time you get disappointed, see that and recognize, oh, I don't have to do that. I could be satisfied instead. Then the practice becomes almost universal. It doesn't matter what the mind is doing. Throw it out and just be satisfied. Very easy practice that way. Easy peasy. Nothing to do. No place to go. Just having a little dance here. Do you think it helps to not pay attention to the results of the practice, it's just to not care no about the results, results yeah. either. There are no results. The results are all over the map. They're up and down. You can like them and not like them. Stop looking for results. Stop looking for results. Look for satisfaction. There is no result. Just more of it. The only result you'll ever have is when you stop breathing completely. That will be your result. <laughs> I mean, satisfaction as a result. I, t I tend to sometimes look for that. Well, stop looking for it and start creating it instead. And how do you create it again? By having wholesome thoughts, by having satisfying thoughts. Start thinking satisfied. Instead of thinking that the satisfaction is going to come from out yonder someplace. Because then you'll be searching out yonder and that's pretty turbulent going out to search out yonder. Yeah, no. <laughs> so the real answer is, is to remember to have wholesome thoughts, to remember that you're talking yourself into satisfaction by having satisfying thoughts. And that's the only way to feel satisfied. You're not going to feel satisfied by having turbulent thoughts or confused thoughts or uh, concerns or any of that. That's not satisfying. And you can be satisfied. You know what it's like. You've been satisfied before. Now you got to practice doing what you did then, which was talking yourself into being satisfied. And then you are. <laughs> and it's just that simple. <laughs> 
So practice over and over again. You're satisfied. This is good enough. Everything is okay. Everything is fine. And then you begin to feel that way. Then you begin to feel hot diggity dog. Everything really is satisfying. Hot dog, I can do this. And that's when the pity comes. That feeling of success and feeling of, I've got this. And then another thought will come by and, oh, no, I don't have it anymore. Well, I can go back again and talk myself back into feeling good and feeling satisfied. And then hot dog, I feel good again. But if I let that coffee cup get heavy because I keep thinking, oh, what do I do? Oh, poor me. Oh, I lost it. I had it. Oh, I'm so <laughs> concerned. Oh, I'm so confused. Those are unhint un unwholesome thoughts that are keeping you from being satisfied. Because mm -hmm. you're not following your own rules. So be careful about that because you don't have any rules. You've got satisfaction instead. Satisfaction means you got no rules. Mm. There are no results. Results are according to some rule. Mm. We're removing the rules here. Let's not have attachments to those rules. Less attached to something wholesome rather than attaching to unwholesome. <laughs> attached to satisfaction rather than attaching to unsatisfaction. That's it. That's easy. Such an easy practice. So keep at it. Keep going. You'll make it. You are made in making it. You are successful now. Don't worry about any results later. You're okay now. Sometimes when that satisfaction gets going, and this happened today, um, I can see the satisfaction and it'll be like I can see through it. Like the satisfaction doesn't really, doesn't really um do much for me dissatisfaction does a lot <laughs> so be satisfied with the satisfaction doesn't do much that's actually a good thing it doesn't do much not much there but being dissatisfied that's huge <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that happened today, or I expected it to look different. The satisfaction. Yeah, I didn't follow yeah. some rule you made. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> yeah, you can do this. You can do this. Stop living up to the standards that you keep setting for yourself and everything is already okay. You don't have to fix anything. Nothing's broken. Nothing's broken. Everything's okay. Everything's all right. Everything's fine. What a marvelous paradise we live in if we'd stop judging it. Mm -hmm. Wanting to make it fixed or better. It's already okay. Wow, nothing to do. Actually, there really is nothing to do. Paradise already works. It's already here. All I have to do is, yeah, all I have to do for that is take the next breath. And here we are again. Bye -bye. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy. No place to go and nothing to do because we're already in paradise. We're already in a home. Place of pilgrimage necessary. <sighs> Alex, keep going with this. Keep playing with this. Keep allowing it to be okay. Yes. When the hindrances come back, you can handle that too. Yeah, they keep coming back. Okay. 
You can handle it. I can handle it. We're not trying to dig, see how dig, how deep we can dig. We're saying, can I empty this shop? Because it's just all dirt. Just all dirt. Yeah. Just all dirt. What you have to do is throw it out. Pretty soon we have a nice hidey hole forever. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's called a grave. That's our hide hole forever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to happen too. It's going to happen. Are we okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Except that I don't really like to use shovels. I'm an old man now. I'll let somebody else do the digging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay without it. <laughs> So let's finish now, and we'll talk later. You keep saying everything is okay. Even the hindrances, can you catch them? That's the question. Or are you going to carry them around until they get heavy and then see them? It's up to you. No, I'll see them now. See, them, see now. them now. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, Domrado. Bye. Bye-bye.